Coming up today on AMA Air, we'll recap the UAS for STEM National Championships. We'll talk to Model Aviation Editor-in-Chief Jay Smith about a new product from Parrot. And we head out to Oregon in the Rogue Eagles RC Club for a very special fly-in. Hello everybody and welcome to AMA Air. We're glad you've joined us today. We've got a great show lined up just for you. That's right. You know, the summer may be winding down, but as we all know, that doesn't mean the flying slows down here at the IAC. Events like the Urcha Jamboree, National Model Aviation Day, and the National Aero Modeling Championships have come and gone. But the flying season here in the Midwest is far from over. That's right. And speaking of national championships, the UAS for STEM national championships were held just a couple of weeks ago here at the IAC. 75 teams competed over the course of the summer in regional events all across the nation in an effort to win $2,500 and be crowned the first UAS for STEM Search and Rescue Challenge champions. The quad squad from Shoreview, Minnesota endured some stormy weather conditions to take home the top prize. The Dewey O. Broberg Jr. Scholarship was also awarded to Paige Hensley from All Things Aviation Club of Northern Indiana. Kids out here had a great time and they, I believe a lot of them learned a lot. From my point, from the Navy side of the house, this is probably one of the best programs that we can have. Um, it allows us as managers and, and people who have the ability to build programs to get the kids early, program them, get them into a program where they can actually see an end goal. So I think some of the big things here is the kids have a head start on what real world applications are. I mean, no matter how smart a kid is, how well he does in school, everything, once you get in life, is about team building and it's team oriented. So these kids have had to work together for a common goal to solve a common problem. And all of these kids that have different interests all have to work together for a successful outcome in the event. Model Aviation Magazine editor Jay Smith was recently invited to get a first look at a brand new product from Parrot, the Disco FPV. Let's take a look. I think the flying wing first is beautiful. When you see it on the air, you know, it really looks like a, like a Star Wars movie, you know, something, you know, uh, technical. Uh. I was thinking, um, Okay, maybe with software, I can do something that anybody can use. Very easy. That was the yeah. first time I've ever done that. That was really easy. Yeah, it's very easy to do. I think the flying wing, it's fast, it's much more fun, you know. Uh, if you pilot the drone to have fun, for your pleasure, you know, uh, you get much, much more fun with the flying wing. You can fly at uh, 20 cm from the, from the ground, you can warm, climb, you know. I also want to thank you for making the goggles so that you can wear your glasses. Yeah, very important. Because that's Because a uh, me and you, uh, we have the same problem. Yes. Uh, I'm a software guy, so we all have wear glasses, you know. Right. So. <laughs> I was also impressed by the fact that when you fly FPV that you can pivot the camera yes. to get a different angle. Uh, normally, it's in wings, it's fixed. Yes, and yes, yes. That is excellent. The sensor is a 14 megapixel. This is cool because this is a 180 degrees fisheye and the field of view of you piloting is about 95 degrees. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk to me, and I, I really enjoy the Disco product, and I appreciate the opportunity. Well, I'm here with Model Aviation Magazine Editor-in-Chief Jay Smith, and Jay, you had a pretty interesting experience about a week ago. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the recent trip that you took? Yes, I was invited to a media event by Parrot in mm -hmm. Palm Springs, California, where we got to fly the new Disco, which is a new product for Parrot in that it's a actual flying wing, and all of their releases up until now have all been multi-rotor. So it has a lot of the features that their multi-rotor, such as the Bebop 2 have, but mm -hmm. it's in a flying wing. 
So my understanding is they've done some pretty cool things with the camera, even with the flight time on that aircraft. What kind of things did you learn about it? Because it's, it's getting a lot of buzz in the media right now. Well, basically, um, it's very easy to put together. The wings mm -hmm. just snap together. Uh, it comes with a set of goggles so that you can do FPV and also comes with a transmitter. The transmitter and the goggles both can plug into your smartphone. So you just download an app that will allow you to see what the camera sees so that you can fly at FPV. So that's all in inclusive and it, it supports all different types of phones, whether it be Android or if you have an Apple phone. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's impressive. Uh, also the goggles are nice because you can put them over glasses. And then as far as the flight times, 45 minutes uh, and they say that's a conservative flight time. 45 minutes? Yes. Wow. And uh, it's a stabilized system. It has an auto launch and an auto land feature. So when you uh, press the auto launch button, the mm -hmm. motor will spin. Um, it's very slow at first, I guess, to make sure that you're clear of the propeller. So you hold it on the front of the uh, wing near the center section and then the motor will spool up, you launch it, It'll automatically take off on its own and fly to an altitude of 50 meters, which would be 150 feet. And then it just does a gentle circle until you take over control. And then you fly it. It's stabilized the whole flight. And then when you're ready to land, you bring it in, um, get it you know, maybe 20, 25 feet uh, mm -hmm. above uh, where you want to land. You press the button and it automatically land for you. Wow. So I know um, in the interview that you were able to do with the CEO of the company while you were there, one of the things that he mentioned was because of his familiarity with software, he really wanted to use software um, to create an aircraft that anybody could pick up and fly right from the very beginning. Did you have a chance to fly it yourself? Yes, I flew it three times. I flew it um, both line of sight, uh, you know, just normally, and then I also uh, flew it with the goggles on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found it super easy to fly. I think a beginner would be comfortable in flying it. Sure. Um, one thing that's interesting about it, too, is that if you want to fly it in a more advanced mode, if you want it to be more aerobatic, you actually have to plug in an additional receiver. So if you already have a transmitter, it will interface. You can plug your receiver into the system. But as it comes, it's set up where it's a stabilized flight system. And you can't turn that off through the included transmitter. You would have to plug in a receiver from another transmitter to get uh, unstabilized flight to allow you to be able to do aerobatics. Well, Jay, thanks a lot for taking some time to talk with us about it. Um, I'm pretty excited to watch some of the video of, of your flight and see the Parrot Disco in action. Thank you. Spaceport America, the world's first commercial spaceport, presents the Spaceport America Drone Summit. Experience drone racing, demos, seminars, and more over three days at the state-of-the-art New Mexico Complex. For more information, visit www.spaceportamericadronesummit.com. Our final story comes to us from a viewer just like you. Larry Cogdell reached out to us to let us know about a very special event that was held by his club this summer. The Rogue Eagles RC Club of Medford, Oregon hosted nearly 50 pilots for the Danny Stanton Memorial Float Fly to honor longtime member and former club president Danny Stanton. His daughter Cindy, remembering how much fun Danny had at float fly events and especially his fondness for raffles, decided to donate almost all the prizes for the raffle in memory of her dad. What a great tribute and wonderful memories. Danny started flying at the age of eight, and immediately he and his brother Gary started building their own aircraft and designs from scratch. During his 71 years of flying, he and his brother enjoyed traveling all over the states, visiting and participating in events of all kinds. If you'd like more information on the Rogue Eagles RC Club, you can visit their website at www.rogue-eagles.org. Thanks again to the Rogue Eagles for sending us their story. If you have a story you'd like to see on the show, head over to air.modelaircraft.org and send us an airmail. We'd love to hear from you. That's all for this episode of AMA Air. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're not yet a member of AMA, head over to modelaircraft.org and sign up today. We'll see you next month, everybody.